You may have been hearing a lot about Salesforce certifications, and I want to give you a brief overview of the available certifications and paths that you can take in the Salesforce ecosystem. So you want to start out at trailhead.salesforce.com, and you'll notice under the credentials drop down this option for certifications. If you click there, that takes you to a starting point of the Salesforce administrator role. There's other roles highlighted here as well, such as Salesforce architect, Salesforce Developer, Salesforce Marketer, Salesforce Consultant, and then finally Salesforce Designer as well. So starting on the administrator side, you'll find several different administrator related credentials. The first of which, and the most popular by far, would be the Salesforce Certified Administrator. And there's other certifications such as Advanced Administrator, CPQ Specialist, which is Configure Price Quote is what that stands for, as well as Marketing Cloud Administrator and Platform App Builder. Now you'll notice that a few certifications appear under multiple roles. For example, Platform App Builder also can be found under Salesforce Developer. Platform App Builder is usually the starting point for those of you that are wanting to ultimately become a Salesforce Developer. And the, here you'll find Platform Developer 1 and Platform Developer 2 as other certifications under the developer role. So there can be some confusion around why Platform App Builder appears in both places. And it's kind of a hybrid type of certification. It resides somewhere between administrator and developer. So if you're wanting to learn the fundamentals of the platform and ultimately become a developer and get the Platform Developer 1 certification, I recommend you start with Platform App Builder. But for the vast majority of people that are just wanting to learn the fundamentals of the platform, I recommend that you start with Salesforce Administrator and it is a prerequisite to then go on to get Advanced Administrator. So if you're wanting to go the admin route and ultimately wanting to get the Advanced Administrator certification, you have to first get the Administrator certification. And that's what most people end up doing. And even developers, those that start on the developer route and go down the path of even Platform App Builder and then Platform Developer 1, I know many developers feel like that because of that, they don't have a firm grasp of some of the fundamentals related to security and automation that is more declared declarative with clicks instead of code and they'll end up going back and getting the admin certification as well to learn more about those things such as security settings, reports, dashboards, those things that tend to be glossed over on the developer side of things. But as you can see there's a lot of certifications here, five total under the admin path. And then for Salesforce Architect that is also a great path that you can take and here you'll find a pyramid showing the two different tracks here to get to either application architect or system architect some of the specializations that you'll need on one or both sides of this uh, pyramid the ultimate would be the certified technical architect there's only uh, several hundred people in the world that are a certified technical architect a step short of that would be either application architect or system architect and you have to attain these various certifications here in order to attain that. Some are shared across both sides of the pyramid such as Platform Developer 1. You'll notice as well Platform App Builder is on the Application Architect side of things. So there again lies the Platform App Builder certification. So not only is this a good certification for admins wanting to extend their uh, skills into their next certification, a lot of times people will take Platform App Builder after taking the admin cert or aspiring developers starting out will start sometimes with Platform App Builder, but then as well, aspiring technical architects will want to satisfy the application architect side of things with that Platform App Builder cert. And then you'll notice Platform Developer 1 is on both sides here. And then there's some key differentiations here between sharing and visibility architect and data architect, whereas on the other side, we've got integration architect, identity and access management architect, and development lifecycle and deployment architect, and there's more details, more notes on all these different architect related certifications and this list is growing over time. You'll see Heroku Architect, B2C Commerce Architect, and more as well. And then other roles to look more deeply at some of these, we were on the developer side of things before, but you have seen some newer certifications such as Industry CPQ Developer, there's a JavaScript Developer 1 certification, B2C Commerce Developer, that's Business Consumer Developer, as well as Marketing Cloud Developer, Omni Studio Developer, once again Platform App Builder, which we've talked about, and then Platform Developer 1 and Dev 2. And one note is that to get Dev 2, you have to have Dev 1 first. So this is a prerequisite in order to ultimately get Platform Developer 2. 
And then on the marketer side, marketing cloud things seem to be harder to come by for training because Salesforce, to my knowledge, does not provide free accounts for the marketing cloud. So a lot of times people have to actually get on the job experience in order to get enough experience to pass things such as marketing cloud administrator and marketing cloud consultant. You will find things on Trailhead, some training modules related to marketing cloud, but oftentimes you don't get the actual hands-on experience. As well, marketing cloud developer, marketing cloud email specialist, Pardot consultant, and Pardot specialist. And then on the Salesforce consultant side, I've got a few courses around sales cloud and service cloud consultant, but also there's experienced cloud consultant that used to be community. And before that was known as portals. And so Salesforce keeps changing the name of this and they call this now an experience or a digital experience. But you also find consultant certifications around the education cloud, as well as Tableau CRM and Einstein discovery consultant. Field Service Consultant, this used to be called Field Service Lightning, that's a fast growing space as well. Marketing Cloud Consultant, Nonprofit Cloud Consultant, for those of you in the nonprofit space. Omni Studio Consultant, Pardot Consultant, and then as I mentioned, Sales Cloud and Service Cloud Consultant. So oftentimes, if people don't go the platform app builder and developer route after admin, I'll see them go down the route of becoming a consultant and probably a sales cloud consultant has the most overlap with admin. So if you're wanting to go the consultant route, I recommend people take sales cloud consultant second. If you have a service oriented environment background, then perhaps pursue service cloud consultant, but there's not a lot of overlap between that and admin. So that may be a little bit more challenging. As I mentioned, I've got courses around service cloud and sales cloud consultant. And then finally, Salesforce Designer. This is kind of a newer role. And here we have the user experience UX designer certification. Now, I anticipate these roles and these lists to grow more. You don't find project manager. You don't find business analyst, to name a few. Uh, Scrum master, another that comes to mind. And so over time, I anticipate more and more certifications coming online for Salesforce over time. But the vast majority of people I've found succeed by starting out with the administrator side of things and then branching out from there. So take some time checking out the various credentials underneath trailhead.salesforce.com and going to credentials, certifications, and decide what role is ultimately best for you. And I'll see you in the cloud.